What is up, everybody? What's up? I forgot you need a mic to be heard on here. For yeah, a second. you gotta get that <laughs> mic up. What's up, everybody? Welcome. How you doing? Back. How are we doing? It is February 9th of 2018 when we are filming this. How are you doing on this day? Yes. How are you guys doing? We are bringing crazy. you episode <laughs> six already. Oh, we've almost done 10 episodes. That's cool. Almost there. A few I more know. Episodes. It's, that's like a lot of time of hours of us yeah. talking. God. That's six weeks. Who the hell wants to listen six to that? Six weeks of podcasting. <laughs> it has been real so far. And real fun. Yeah, real, <laughs> yeah, real terrible, actually. No, it's been super fun. It's been amazing, actually. Yeah. Because the support fun. and just Thanks. feedback we're getting has been incredible guys so thank you thank you thank you we can't thank you enough for dude all of the positive reviews yeah all the feedback even the negative reviews are helpful and mm -hmm. the you know constructive criticism we appreciate all of it mm -hmm. and this just support and encouragement has yeah, just been so absolutely. nice people are i'm telling you i have a really good audience like they're awesome we have a really good audience now they're both of ours and yeah they're just like good people i feel like yeah absolutely you know, it's good vibes attract other good vibes that's right and they're we're the putting good vibes <laughs> good energy out there and we're getting uh good energy back so that's yeah. awesome guys thank you mm -hmm. so much and and bef and just to start things out i want to give a huge shout out to all of our stellar patrons yes these guys include stephanie s michelle c chase c randy c lots of c's for last names but elizabeth b Jake C and Jim W. Thank you Thank so much, you guys, all so for the much. continued support on Patreon. Yes. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate it because this podcast still has not been approved for monetization on YouTube, even though we are waiting six, six weeks. Six weeks into it and yeah. no monetization <laughs> on it yet. Dude, Which, they're a mess over there. But I think I really think YouTube's trying to clean it up. I think good things are coming. I have a good feeling about 2018 for YouTube. I think they're going to really start trying to make some really good changes. Yeah, so. I really hope so. Because my God, it's been a roller coaster <laughs> with YouTube lately. Yeah, you well, dude, you got in right when it like started getting crazy. Like literally right Let's when it see, started getting crazy. I started my channel March of last year, end of March last year. Yeah, so. that's when shit hit the fan. And it shit hit the fan right when I decided to start talking about conspiracy theories and stuff. Of course, like full time. <laughs> like I decided to change my channel completely. Then this happened like that week. I know it's it's so bizarre because before that, I feel like you could have posted oh, all yeah. of your stuff, no problems. Whatsoever. I think I would have considered not doing that, honestly, with the current circumstances. If you had known, yeah, that if it I had known, get... I would have been like, you know, maybe because like I think a lot of the reason why I'm having such monetization problems is because I talk about conspiracy theories. Well, absolutely. I mean, there's censorship going on, you know, at the highest level, and right, you know, they don't want that the shit out there so yeah trying to punish you speaking yeah. of conspiracies though that's what we're talking about today <laughs> yes 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 the I jfk conspiracy. assassination conspiracy the granddaddy of all the conspiracies seriously though <laughs> king uh it's it's king. a real mind fuck and it's crazy how many people believe in it so well we'll get into all that is there anything else we had to yeah say? i just real quick wanted to mention a few other things and as in regards to uh patreon and and just supporting us um just so you guys know we did redo our rewards on patreon and some of the things that we're doing is actually pretty cool uh we're starting to uh well for one you get uh exclusive chat with us uh through the discord app um which through that you're nobody's done it yet but you're allowed to ask us questions and we may pick your question to be featured on the podcast we're going to start doing sort of a q a at the beginning you know we'll pick a question or two to answer yeah and uh so you can send those to us through the patreon discord uh server so definitely check that out if you haven't already um if you're a patron but some of the other things that we're doing we're doing a monthly patron only uh what is it live stream we did one what last week yeah that was we really did a patron on, yep so if you're a patron look out for that for and uh, i just followed a bunch of people a bunch of patrons too on twitter yeah yeah we just followed twitter, some people yeah. on twitter uh, we've got some goodies that we'll be sending to some patrons and, and some other cool and stuff, cards. all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely go check that out if you haven't already. But if if you can't support us on Patreon, that's a OK with us. Yes. One way you can help us that's free 
is rate and review the podcast on whatever platform you're listening or watching because actually guys that really does help us out so thank you to the nearly like 800 people on itunes that have done that so far yeah that's awesome seriously guys i know that takes like that that takes a little more than going above and beyond you know like because like it's easy to hit a, a like button which is right. good we appreciate the likes too but like i really appreciate any of you who went and wrote a re like wrote a review on itunes i don't even think i know how to do that like and i probably would have been too lazy to do that for someone else so it's really thank easy you. actually um yeah. even just to like rate it like one through five stars just give us a rating because oh, so you can just do a star yeah you can just do a, a star rating you don't oh. have to write a review like write words yeah well that would be awesome so homies. that really helps us out and then also share share our podcast with everyone your mom your dad your grandma <laughs> grandpa with everyone <laughs> your little your little brother well maybe not your little siblings but unless they're ready to be woke but <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, share share a podcast, share our YouTube uh, videos of the podcast. It just helps uh, get the word out there. And I mean, the amount of people that are listening and watching now has been steadily growing. So that is awesome. So thank you guys awesome. so much. All of our mile higher homies, as we call them. <laughs> thank you guys for listening and watching the podcast. Yes. So what are we doing <laughs> Today. We are conspiracizing today. I've got the conspiracy expert here today. I'm I'm not <laughs> as well educated about many of these conspiracy theories like the Kendall Ray is. You're kind of the conspiracy queen on YouTube, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, I think <laughs> I take it more seriously than like most people that talk about it. Yeah. That's the only difference. Like I'm just like a lot of people are interested in it, but I'm just like a freak about it. Like I like really want to know fucking everything. Right, so. and you made a video about the JFK conspiracy theory, what, like a year ago or so? Yep. It was one of the first ones I did because I've been obsessed with this theory. Like, it's so interesting to me. Yeah, and it's one of your most popular videos, I think. It's so yeah. interesting to see. Well, I've always just been fascinated with the shooting, but before I knew about conspiracies, I didn't even know about conspiracies until a few years ago, but even before then, I was really obsessed with just the shooting. Like, when we learned it in school, I remember just on my free time, I would, like, Google the the assassination how it happened and right. i'd watch the video like a ton of times i was a strange child but a um, lame duck as you say <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well it's really embarrassing there was so many errors in that video because i think it was one of my first conspiracies i did so i was really nervous that like the government was going to come like take me out so i was kind of scared and i was sick as hell that day so i said <laughs> at one point i said the the president was in a lame duck position which it's definitely sitting duck and then instead of secret service, you said social security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so embarrassing. And the president's social security forces will. Dude, you know what? That's like, it's so frustrating as a creator. Like you're just all of your all old time. bullshit is still available. Like I go back to some of my old videos and I'm like, what the hell even is this? It's so weird. We all do weird things in our past. Embarrassing things. <laughs> oh, I dude. wish I did a lot better job with that video, but I'm going to redo it. I'm going to redo the video eventually. But this podcast is about to teach you guys way more about this. It's it's going to be way more informative than the video. We're going to go way deeper. And now I actually really do know what I was talking about. I was relatively new to this kind of stuff when I did that video. So I understand it way differently now. Yes. So welcome, everybody, to the JFK Conspiracy <laughs> Podcast episode. Welcome nine minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying welcome again? Because <laughs> I'm welcoming, welcome welcoming to the new part. Everybody into the conspiracy world. You have okay. to, okay. You have to op be open minded when you talk about this, and you have to remember that everything the various government agencies yes. tell you is not necessarily the truth. That's yes. the biggest thing. Well, we have remember. actual proof of that now. Right. Um. So yeah, I mean, most people don't think that way, though. They actually think that <laughs> everything they tell us is how it is, and that's just. I mean, provably not true over and over. There's so many explanations that are literally government archive documents that prove. Well, yeah, that because, they lie well, about a lot. Of, well, that's the thing about when we talk about especially conspiracy theories surrounding the government is that a lot of the information that we find out, we find out later because yeah. a lot of these memos and letters yes. and, you know, or people do their own independent or people investigations. give their own testimony later on yeah. because it's been so many years since this happened so they feel more comfortable to come out uh comfortable and come out and say hey here's what i really saw or here's what really happened so yeah. mm -hmm. that's what's interesting about these conspiracy theories so we've got a couple stats here that are really interesting about the 
JFK conspiracy. Yes, it's crazy. So many people believe in this theory. I right. mean, it's it's very shocking the amount of people. Um, even to this day, the majority of Americans still believe that uh, JFK was assassinated some type of um, conspiracy, what's the, what's the, and there was more than one shooter. Um, what's the exact stats on that? So in 19... 19- 63 they found that 29 percent of americans believe that one man's one man was responsible so that means 52 percent believe that others were involved in a conspiracy so 52 percent of americans this is by guys. gallup that's pretty lopsided yeah and it's it's interesting because it clearly shows that the the majority of the population believes that lee harvey oswald was not the lone gunman in this yeah and that there is some other facet or person or group Mm -hmm. responsible for the assassination of perhaps one of the greatest presidents i think well listen to this 1976 81 percent of americans believe that there was a conspiracy and this is gallup poll again this is all from gallup and now in 2018 it's a hundred percent I'm just kidding. That's I was not, like, what? that's not verified verified no, fact, no. but but a lot of people believe it because when you look at this, whether you want to believe it was a big conspiracy or not, this is the weirdest. I mean, this was strange how everything happened. It doesn't make any sense. I think the fact that it was filmed on camera threw off everything. Like if there really is a conspiracy, right? I think the fact that it Whoever fil- filmed it, yeah, because you can see it. You can see the up. evidence with your own eyes. So pretty interesting stuff yeah yeah no it's it's pretty bizarre when we start looking at some of this stuff so to start things out um jfk so john f kennedy this guy was not just you know if you don't know who he was or you don't know much about him or sort of what he stood for he was a very progressive president he -hmm. was not you know just your typical old white dude you know that (laughs) is president he was I guess he was somewhat younger than some of the previous He would be presidents. considered a progressive Democrat today. Right. He was very, very far left with his beliefs about things. Right. And he was very glamorous, wasn't he? Wasn't he oh, like yeah. kind of like a... like Kind of a celebrity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of had that celebrity persona to him and he was and involved. And he was married some, to Jackie, who was just like gorgeous. Yeah. Like a model. Yeah. So, I mean, everyone was kind of like fascinated by them. It was a little bit how people look at the royal family you know wow it was Mm. i mean people really really loved them interesting yeah and apparently he had some sort of childhood injury in which since that time he had an injury as a child he had to wear a back brace yeah he had something i want to say he was like fall out of a tree or or it's like some like weird rich person sport like lacrosse (laughs) or golf or cricket or like i want maybe even like on a horse he somehow injured his back. Josh is going to look it up. But he injured his back and he was wearing a back brace. And he wore this back brace like his whole life. And he was wearing it the day he was assassinated. And that's what actually kept him sitting upright when he was shot. Because if you've seen the footage, you should definitely watch it before proceeding with this. Because unfortunately, I can't show you footage on a podcast. But it's important in this whole, I mean, to understand this theory at all, you have to see the video. Yeah. Um, Apparently, unless I guess you're really squeamish, but... Apparently, he had a lot of health problems as a child, so oh, he was he on did. a lot of medications and stuff. So, Well, the Kennedys are cursed. Let's all remember. The Kennedy, I have a whole video on the Kennedy family. They have an unbelievable history of bad luck. I mean, so many child deaths, so many car accidents, plane accidents. Like, it's, it's crazy. Bizarre, like, so really. many of them died. God. So the, Why, people though? believe there was a curse because, Why? well, Kennedy's older sister, she was like bipolar. But they thought something was like fucking wrong with her. So they gave her a lobotomy. And ever since then, like shit just went downhill for their family. And she was reduced to like nothing. She died pretty recently, actually. But she was like in a wheelchair her whole life. Yeah. And then then just from there, it just got worse and worse and worse. God damn. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So he was a very progressive guy. And obviously for the time in the night early 1960s you know being being a progressive person was not necessarily the most popular thing no and especially like when it comes to like the establishment and establishment politics yeah you know because some of his ideas about how the government should be ran and how the country should be ran 
were very, very far left for the time. And some of those ideas were like wanting to break up the Federal Reserve and the IRS, which I mean, we still want to do that to this day. And yeah. Whenever anybody comes out and says stuff like that, they immediately, it seems like they well, get no shushed. Well, no one does, dude. No well, yeah, one does no now. No one does. Yeah, it's true. Because they saw I what happened like to him. I feel like Bernie Sanders may have said something like that, but he may not have said but something. But Bernie goes around it. But he's, Bernie, the reason I always loved Bernie is because he did call out this bullshit. He just went about it in a way that was more politically correct and like Right, yeah. It kind digestible. of played the game a little bit more, yeah. Yeah, like if you understand it well, when Bernie speaks, you honestly hear it differently than other people hear it that don't understand the corruption within our banking system right um yeah so he was against the federal reserve the irs he wanted to change up a ton of things um shut he wanted to shut down the cia or or was it the nsa i don't know one of those uh the yeah he wanted to either it was either the cia or the nsa or both and he talked about Which, secret societies yeah there's because, a speech sorry i keep cutting you off i'm, I'm not trying to it's okay it's okay <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> no i just i am just i have all these things flowing into my head about this i know this is gonna be a long one um <laughs> so ba basically in a nutshell he just did not like all the secrecy that existed within the government and has been verified especially with the cia and the nsa are the biggest culprits of secrecy and, and corruption and corruption yeah and over history and Guys, they're up to some crazy stuff, even to this day. I mean, we don't even know what the yeah. CIA is doing. Yeah, dude, we don't even want to get what into the NSA the, is doing. what we know about yeah, that. It's, but. It's, it's really crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, he was against those secret societies. And he has a... And there are secret societies, for those of you who don't know. I mean, like, Freemasons. Look up Bohemian Grove. Like, there are active secret societies today. Majestic. Groups. Yeah, yeah. Majestic. Majestic 12. Whatever you want to call them. Yeah. So JFK straight up called them out. Um, let's listen to this speech where he. He was addressing the issue of secret societies and how he wanted to do something about them because he felt like it was, it was, you know, how, like how <laughs> we all feel. That link on accident. I like accidentally. Uh, we'll just do an undo. <laughs> okay. I tried. I did undo and it didn't undo. Undo. It's still not. Okay. Going. We'll go find it. Okay. I'm going to go find it. But that's pretty brave for especially the president. Can you imagine like if Obama had been like, no, they don't. Hey, know. we want to get rid of all the secrecy. We want to make our government transparent like it should be. We want to get rid of all these secret government agencies. So here's him talking about secret societies. JFK. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are as a people inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine 
that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program. For from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. Wow. So that's just two minutes of it that you can hear the whole thing. If you just type in JFK secret societies on YouTube, it'll come up. Wow. That's that's pretty, pretty brave for a president to come out and basically call out, you know. Yeah. The whole freaking. Well, it's like with what we know now, babe, like yeah. that's this speech makes so much sense. Like I understand oh, exactly I what confirms, he's talking about. It confirms. It I didn't understand me. it a year ago. Now I do. Now I do. I know exactly what he was referring to with a ton of right. that. So he so he came into the White House thinking that, hey, I'm the president now. I'm going to shake things up. Yep. I'm going to break this power structure, this this government that is, you know, complex and yeah. does all these secretive things. And I'm going to basically try to help the American people out by making it yeah. transparent. This so is why he was my favorite president. We know what's going on. And he got knocked off possibly because of it. Yeah, I mean, imagine if we didn't have the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is what enslaves us. It's the biggest problem that we have. I mean, it's crazy it's because it's not federal. It's not government. It's a private, it's a bank. private yeah. bank. It's not. Fe yeah, the federal is. <laughs> the federal is such it's a. It's put there to confuse people because most people do think it's right. government. Oh yeah, I didn't no, for years. We're in until... debt to this random fucking right. bank. That's connected to bigger bank i mean it's a whole yeah. thing That's and they a, can just keep printing money whenever they want well it's not even <laughs> yeah i mean they just print it they don't even make sure they have the gold to back it up with no because gold it doesn't none of it has value if you think about it gold nothing here on earth value. has value gold does. okay yes i know that i'm talking about money like monetary value because it was made up money was made up right it's just a piece of paper so yes it, gold has value of course but the whole the whole system we use everything that we like we would pay for gold with doesn't exist does that make sense it's like bullshit at the end of the day yeah you know what I, you know what i mean like no we don't need money like there's plenty of societies that didn't have money or careers or any of this we just think it's like how it has to be well it's a way to control if yeah. you can control the money and money rules everything money yes. controls all aspects of our lives it's right. the thing that we wake up in the morning to to go and earn i mean it's literally what makes us tick and that's the way they want it to be they want money to be a controlling factor so mm -hmm. by implementing this private bank they have full control over this monetary system that we all are enslaved to so it's it's really messed up it but, is that's a discussion for another podcast. Yeah, I was just realizing how off track I was getting. We can go down that getting. rabbit hole <laughs> oh, for an hour or two. So, Oh my God, bitch. You could lock me in a room for like 48 hours and I just talk straight about this stuff. <laughs> Seriously, it's Seriously, so fascinating though, it's to me. crazy. So going back to JFK, um, we're going to start with the actual day, the events that happened on the day that he was assassinated and then talk about what are the theories as behind who killed him and what you know why why exactly and just kind of the strange evidence right okay so we'll begin on friday november 22nd in 1963 and the account that we're going to give is sort of the official account of events that happened on the day leading up to the day he was uh, assassinated as well as some of the preceding events uh to the assassination because it's interesting to hear exactly what happened so that you can sort of start, you know, picking it apart and looking at the details and finding the inconsistencies and, you know, see how these conspiracy theories around it have developed because it's pretty baffling. There's so, so many unanswered questions. So we begin on Friday, November 22nd, 1963, approximately 1230 a.m. Lee Harvey Oswald, which for those that don't know, 
he is the one that was basically charged with the assassination of John F. Kennedy officially, according to, you know, the FBI, the federal authorities. But he maintained his innocence until he died like a fucking day later. Right. Yeah. It's really bizarre. So it was like a big deal that they were in Dallas. People were really excited about it. It was like a famous time that he was going to be there. Not a famous time, but like a lot of people were excited about this visit of him coming to Texas. Um, so 10 a.m., the weather started clearing up because they had bad weather earlier that day. And... They had taken, they had made the decision to take off the top of his presidential limo. Kennedy wanted to be accessible to the people. Well, that's what he was all about, dude. He was all about connecting with people, being the guy for the people. He was a really solid dude that really wanted change because he was not about the power and the wealth and the fame. He already had that stuff going in. He really wanted to help. So he really wanted to be accessible to people. He wanted to be able to see them, shake hands, smile at them. A lot of presidents, I mean, nowadays, no one rides around without a top on their, their well, car yeah, as a president. Well, yeah, it's because of these assassination attempts that they don't let the president ride around in open top cars anymore. <laughs> they shouldn't have let him ride around yeah, like that, that anyway. Yeah, that seems really stupid, really. Yeah, well, Such Secret a sec- Service yeah. agent Wynn Lawson is the one who decided to take the bubble top off. Hmm. So this is the morning. So this is, uh, for those that don't know, this is the day of the assassination. And, and this is earlier in the morning. So around 1150 AM, multiple coworkers or witness or witnesses see Oswald on the first floor of the Texas school book deposit, uh, deposit depository. God, I can't fucking read eating lunch, which is also where he worked, which is also where they believe the shots were we're from and so at this point in time the motorcade is kind of making its way through the city uh through the uh dallas Mm -hmm. down these streets shaking hands with people um yeah he spent he made a bunch of he was delayed actually yeah he was delayed quite a bit to get to where he was because he was spending so much time stopping and saying and talking to people which they don't do that anymore either like the president (laughs) doesn't just like stop the motorcade and I mean, I guess he could, but that seems like such a risk, especially yeah. in like a crowded with like people crowded on the street. Yeah. Yeah. So this is when around 12, 29 p.m., the president's limo turns onto Elm Street. And this was weird because normally they they don't go in a nine. They don't normally go in a 90 degree angle with exposure like that with the president out. That's not protocol. Normally there's. When it's a 120 angle street, they can see the president. They can keep an eye on people more easily than when it's 90. There's people on both sides. Does so the that reason sense? that they turned. So it's because they turned onto Elm Street. Yes. That was a that was a security risk. Mm-hmm. So they're going down Elm Street. What is the wife's name? Have we figured this out? Still no wife's name. <laughs> no, I Googled it. We're just going to call her Jack. Oh, we can't even call her Jack. Why is she important, though? No, she's not. I just wa- wanted to note that she was in, in the car. She's in the car. And then there's a driver. So those that's who's in the car. There's a driver, Jack Connolly, his wife, Jackie, and John. Right. So they turn onto this Elm Street, and that's when the first shot is fired. And the first shot goes through his neck. No, it missed the president. Oh, there was one that missed him? The first shot missed the president. <laughs> yeah, the first shot is fired missing the president. Uh a fragment from the bullet what? Actually hit the uh from the street hit James uh Tog who's watching the motorcade. So this is just a, somebody standing by. There was a first bullet. This does not it it does hit him though. The, the f- first one did hit him. I'm very confused about. I don't like this timeline. <laughs> no, I mean this is the official record, so yeah, well, the official record. I mean, you can see him get shot. He gets shot. He literally h- grabs his neck and holds his neck. Am I missing something? Well, I think you're getting ahead. The sh- 
No, because it says the second one hit him in the head. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. The third, Unless there was three shots. There was three shots. The The second shot hit Kennedy. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Yes, you're right. There How was did three I not shots. know that? I actually did not know that. Yeah, there was three shots. So one... Which that makes this makes even, it even weirder. More weirder. Yeah, exactly. So, oh my gosh. So the first shot misses him. Ricochets hit this guy named James uh, Tag, who is watching the motorcade in the De uh, Dealey Plaza, which is where they were at the time. What the hell? So then he shot again, and this time he shot in the neck. And he like grabs his neck and kind of like hunches over. And Jackie's right. like looking at him, like, what's what's wrong? They're clearly right, talking. Right, because he kind of just looks like he like goes down well the brace is what's keeping him up so the brace is keeping him up and he's kind of his head's just kind of like bobbing it's up and down. Like slumped down because he he probably couldn't breathe chances are he was you know having issues yeah and this is called the thor uh, thorn burn position and it's the most common neurological response to spinal damage actually so it wasn't surprising to see that happen when he got hit there yeah so but instead of like you know, if you got shot in the back of the neck, you would completely like probably slump all the way over and fall down flat, like or like lay down flat on the seat. Yeah, but but he was kind of sitting the, up the still, right? Brace. He was right. still up. So that's that's a butterfly effect for those of you who know what that means. Um, if he wasn't wearing that brace, if he didn't get hurt as a child, he may have been slumped over and may not have died because he may have been protected from this the third bullet. Right. Can't believe I didn't know there was three. What the hell? <laughs> I just like I forgot because I I guess I didn't even count it because. Well, you only think about only, the bullets that, that hit actually him. hit him. Yeah. Meanwhile, there was a first bullet, which is interesting that the first bullet missed. So, didn't they hear the first bullet ring out? Like, wouldn't you? I mean, you would hear a bullet yeah. unless it was that loud. You couldn't hear a gunshot. No. And they didn't know. No. Well, that's the weird thing. Is like. Why didn't they jump on him as soon as they heard one bullet? Yeah, why didn't they jump on him as soon as his wife has time to check on him? If she Seriously. if she has time to react to him, look at him and ask him like how he's doing before they like they didn't do anything. No. Like nothing happened. Someone should have jumped on his ass, knocked him down to the ground, and they would have sped the fuck out of there. They would have gone right. over the grass. Yeah. No one you know, it's so weird. It's so the so driver keeps going casual. at the same speed. That's weird too. Because Secret Service protocol and the reason why there is Secret Service is that the Secret Service's sole mission is to protect the president from this exact scenario. Yeah. And they're taught in their training to literally be a human shield. And the fact that none of them jumped on top of them as soon as they heard gunshots ring out is ba is very suspicious and baffling, honestly. Yeah, it is. Because when the third shot is fired, it hit uh, JFK on the back. Yeah. The right side of his head causing a portion of his head behind his ear to blow out. Yeah. So, ah, God. And right after that, this third shot is fired. Uh, the sheriff, Bill Decker, ordered the Dallas police officers to the railroad tracks behind the fence on the grassy knoll. And meanwhile, all this is happening. Lee Harvey Oswald is getting a Coke from the soda machine at his work the the book depository and then started walking out of the buildings after being stopped briefly by a dallas police officer actually and he then proceeded to walk past uh, uh nbc's reporter robert mcneil who's looking for a phone to call in the shooting so lee so H oswald is just like chilling chilling like n he went and got people a are coke. like freaking out there's police yeah and he's just like casually walking out of his work <laughs> yeah and then get this he casually hops on a bus and casually goes to the movie theater to have a little matinee showing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's absolutely crazy and meanwhile so at this point once once jfk is hit with that third bullet obviously they t the presidential limo takes off for the hospital finally a little too late at this point but at 11, 12 35 p.m., they arrived at the Parkland Memorial Hospital, where at that point they had called out a, a 24 7 40 white male suffering from gunshot wound is admitted and brought to trauma room one. So they rushed him in trying to save, save the guy. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the Secret Service agent had, who was in charge in Dallas at that time, called his boss to inform him that JFK had been hit by a bullet 
And once the doctor took a look at JFK, he entered his notes as saying that there's a single, uh, there's a large wound on the back of the president's head as well as a small hole in his throat. Mm -hmm. They actually used the hole that he was shot through in order to perform a, a tracheotomy mm. in order to open up his airway. Well, it's already there for them. Yeah. And meanwhile, like you said, Oswald is hopping on the city bus <laughs> seven blocks from his work. And he's just he's chilling because there's traffic in this plaza where they're all at. He actually got off the bus and got a cab. He oh, didn't take really? the bus to the movie theater. He oh. hopped out and got a got into a cab. And he apparently went back to his house and changed and then grabbed his pistol before heading to the movie theater. How do we know that? This is How, He grabbed his pistol? Yeah. Didn't he have a pistol earlier? Well, that's the thing. So he ditched his guns, casually walked out, and then went back and got a different gun? Okay. Supposedly. Supposedly, Josh. People are going to keep <laughs> saying that to you. Supposedly. Josh always says supposedly. I, I do that with so supposedly. many words. Supposedly. Once you get in the habit of saying something, it's so hard to break it. So around 12.57 p.m., they are at the hospital with Kennedy, and they he's passed away at this point he's technically dead at this point yeah i mean yeah i mean there was no no hope in saving no. him if you've seen the video you know so they were they were catholic too i didn't know that but they had kind oh, of yeah. like catholic yeah. catholic faith going on yes. so jackie well they're like irish right they're like irish catholic fitzgerald kennedy right so they're working on getting a casket ordered uh jackie's worried about um getting a, a father or priest there to perform Catholic last rites before he's died. It's kind of a kind of like a last prayer before somebody goes in hopes that, you know, kind of helps them transition to heaven a little bit easier, I guess. And at this point in time, he's dead. And what's interesting is that Oswald is just kind of running around at the uh, running around Dallas right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh why don't you so he runs into the movie theater at 1 40 p.m meanwhile vice president lyndon b johnson's obviously notified that jfk is no longer here and he and uh his wife leave I guess in order to see what's going on. So meanwhile at 2 p.m. Secret Service agent Roy Kellerman gets into an argument with Dallas County Medical Examiner Dr. Earl Rose. The Kennedy party wants to put his body in a casket and want to leave the hospital. So that was the big fight. It wasn't just the Kennedy party like it was not Jackie. <laughs> it was them. They wanted to move him via Air Force One. Right. Uh, or two. So they didn't want it's you can't just like take a body that's completely illegal and they did. The medical team at Park Parkland Memorial wanted to do the autopsy. They wanted to get their own assessment because they had a different they had different beliefs of what happened to him. Like they didn't think that the bullets weren't came in the direction that the right. government said that they did. Right. Yeah. So of course they're they don't want these random people, these unbiased doctors to look at him they want to take him to where they can control everything yeah yeah so they did which is illegal you can look it up yeah and so oswald like we said he he went back changed grabbed his gun went to the movie theater and this is where he's seen sneaking in and at this point the police are searching for him which i don't totally understand why they would be searching for him if they didn't know already that he was somehow involved that's what's odd to me he gets and then he ends up getting into a fight with the with a police officer crazy punch he punched the officer in the face and the other officer punched back giving oswald a black eye huh 
So are we still talking about the hospital? Can I go back to that? Okay. So this is interesting. Killing a president was not considered a federal offense. Because of this, the medical examiner argued that the autopsy has to be performed before the body is taken out of Dallas, which is correct. But they said, fuck you. And they did what they want. Right. They grabbed the body. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So they or they finally it was quite a fight. They put up a fight to keep him there. They were trying to like they were refusing to do it and everything. But eventually they were pretty much like, you know, we're the top of the top. You can't say no to us. And then they did it. Then they took him. So that's been like hugely controversial because we don't know exactly like we don't have an unbiased report of his condition. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't. I'm just I'm still like wrapped up about Oswald. Like, what the hell was he doing? Because he got in a fight with a cop and then a cop ended up getting killed. A Dallas police officer got killed and he actually that's what he got arrested for was the killing of this Dallas police officer and brought in. Mm-hmm. For homicide, but he he never admitted to doing this. That's what I'm trying to say. This timeline, I think, is very the official story. This timeline we're going off of. So I just want to be like careful when going through this because he never he said he didn't have a gun. He said like never was using those guns. He said he never shot a police officer. He said that he didn't go home and get a pistol. Like that's not what he says according to him i mean and we don't know a lot but i mean that's the thing we we can't even like get access to like we don't know what's true and what's not because everything seems so like i don't know it just seems so orchestrated like it just like the timeline is perfectly lined up with like what they want us to believe yeah so like we have no like i i i'm sitting here and like i've been looking at this research and stuff all afternoon and i'm still so confused about even yeah. what happened that's why we probably sound so, so confused on this podcast i mean this is just confusing it's i i can't even like really understand what happened because i feel like there's so many inconsistencies nothing lines up there's like when you so if you go and look up the timeline for this assassination you'll I swear I saw like five different timelines. Like they all alter differently. So it's like, what do you believe? Which timeline you do you can't. Even go off of? That's why I'm being trying to be really careful about this because I know that they change things. They put out official stories. There's so many. Ex- I don't trust any. Th- I look into so many things and I've seen so much proof of changing the official story, especially when you hear things like they illegally moved the body, how they didn't want them to do an autopsy. Like these are weird, weird things. Yeah, it's really bizarre. It's really bizarre. So, because so he so Oswald is so around two in the afternoon, Oswald is now at the homicide and robbery office on the third floor of the city hall, saying he didn't do shit. Right, saying I had nothing to do with this. I work in that building, so naturally I was there. In fact, should we hear his? Um, I'm going to pull up what he said. There's only like 45 seconds that we have of Oswald. He never got to defend himself because he was murdered. It um, seems we'll it seems part. like so this is what I'm gathering is that Oswald whether or not he was involved with the actual shooting of the president I'm not sure yet but it seems like he had a target on his back they knew who he was they knew he was somehow involved in some way or another cuz they seems like they literally went after him as soon as the shootings happened like they immediately they knew charged look him. for him they try charged to find him, him within hours no, I know. I know. But like it's they like, fully said they were like they were so sure of themselves. They had the official story almost. It almost felt like before because it was so quickly determined exactly what happened when there is all this confusion with all this confusion. Why on earth was he? He was never given. They wouldn't even allow him to see attorneys have his own representation. They wouldn't right. even allow that. They completely like quarantined him off because who's to say that someone else didn't do the shooting and oswald was just at work because he works there and then he left got his coke got on the bus got in a taxi whatever went to the movie theater just because that's what he was doing right he could have just been literally getting off work but like ah, oh, i'm gonna yeah. chill go to the movie theater and- yeah who knows if he killed a police officer or not like could be i mean it's possible that all of this is the way that they're saying it was but I there's mean, just so there. much evidence that they change things they do sneaky little things here they cover this they cover that i mean the fact that they are not releasing documents for years 
is enough for people to say, what the fuck? Why don't we get to know this? This is like there should freedom be another of information. investigation, independent investigation with full access to all cl- all this probably class. I mean, yeah. we already know there's thousands of classified documents and yes, yes, some of them were recently released, but not all of them. Yeah. So it, there should be full transparency on this on yeah. one of our one of our fucking presidents got yes. killed. Like yes. the American people deserve to know, like our leader, what happened to him? The yeah. truth. And yep. it's and and like people never want to like realize how cor- how this corruption's in there. But like when you think about it like this, so there's five five families that are the most powerful families in the in the world. Um, they own pretty much fucking everything. We were enslaved to these five extremely wealthy families: Rothschild, Rockefeller, uh, du- Dupont, Mur- uh, not Murphy. Why can't it? Morgan, J- as in J P Morgan and Bush. So, Bush Sr., Daddy Bush. <laughs> Papa Bush. Papa Bush. He worked in the CIA. He was extremely high time, up yeah. in the CIA during this time. So, I mean, you can't, you just can't take things at face value or else you're going to end up walking around the world believing the bullshit like everybody else. You have to look at it with a little bit of suspicion. Just taking their official version, be like, that's what it is. And in anyone who says anything else, I'm just not going to listen. <laughs> I don't want to know and I get some people don't want to know but like this is ridiculous how this was handled this is the craziest thing and everything just like seemed like it happened so fast because by by like three in the afternoon Lyndon B. Johnson's already the president they like swarm in like yeah. immediately he's already the president they've already got him they've got JFK's body loaded onto Air Force oh, and One he had this weird he looked over at this I can't remember who he looked at and just gave this creepy smile it's on camera like Jackie's like standing there. Her husband just got shot next to her. She's like covered in his brains. And yeah. he's like smiling. Yeah. Oh, so weird. But yeah, that's, I mean, you have to do it fast. That's just how it goes. Like that, that's actually. So this is, I guess this is kind of interesting. So back to Oswald. So by three in the afternoon, we've got a new president. Oswald is being interrogated supposedly by the police and they take, uh, paraffin tests of his hands and face in order to determine if he has fired a gun and apparently according to the official report his test of his hands come back positive and at this point they've charged they have only charged him with the killing of officer tiff Pitt, which is the dallas police officer that that was killed supposedly by oswald but at this point in time he hasn't even been charged with killing the president yet mm. but they're they're clearly tr- like it's like clearly they're it's surprising that they're not like doing like a lockdown of the city, like a massive manhunt, like going building to building, searching for a shoot. Like think about if that had happened today, like oh, I know. we would have like SWAT teams going into every building in that vicinity, looking for people. And if they didn't involved. know about Oswald, like why on earth when he was arrested at the movie theater, there was like a ton of police officers that arrested him too. It wasn't just like one arrest and they brought him in. It was like a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently, uh, Robert F. Kennedy called J. Edgar Hoover, which is the FBI director at the time, and J. Edgar Hoover told him, we have the man. Yeah. Just straight up was like, yep, we got him. Oh, and let's just side note, let's just all remember that J. Edgar Hoover decided that Martin Luther King was the most dangerous man in America and declared that in official Mm. documents. What the fuck? That's not suspicious at all. A man who preaches the word of Gandhi pretty much. Yeah. Most dangerous man in America. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's so fucking ridiculous. Sometimes this, I like realize I'm in this like crazy world and I just can't even believe this is real. Oh my God. Once and then like it all starts connecting too. like the more you look into these conspiracies, like you, you find stuff about this conspiracy, that conspiracy, you know, and they all connect like you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That guy again. Oh, this this thing again. It's like it's so weird. Yeah, and it's 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 just wild because let's talk about the gun and the bullet for a second. Okay. So the rifle that he was shot with had a six point five millimeter uh cartridge in there. That's a and it's a big old bullet too. This is not this is not just like a little you know, this is not a small caliber rifle. This is a fairly high caliber rifle 
But and, it's a shitty gun. But it, yeah, but it's like this old ass gun. Yeah. That is bolt action. Italian made gun. Which, if you don't know what a bolt action gun is, you have it's it's very finicky. You have to manually load each bullet because you have to crank. You have to pull the bolt back. Like my sound effects. <laughs> pop another bullet in, and like it's not. Yeah. It's not. An, it's definitely not really an efficient no. weapon to use in For an assassination. For sniping. Yeah, and yeah. it's not advanced at all. It's not like it has a scope on it or something. No. This is just a run of the or a middle of the road, mm -hmm. fairly old rifle. Yeah, and it, it was an old rifle. Mm -hmm. And what did Jim? What did this guy Jim Mar say? He said that it would be like it'd be impossible to hit impossible a moving target with this through gun. bushes and people. Like there, it's insanely hard with this type of gun. Not only that, Oswald was not not that good at shooting he wasn't he was in the military so yes he had experience with guns he knew how to shoot but he was considered a marksman and so he wasn't a sharpshooter he wasn't considered an right, expert an either sniper. or like a sniper right no he was just and this would have taken a guy in the military right this would have definitely taken a serious you know sniper sharpshooter oh, to yeah. pull this off yeah hitting somebody in a moving car yeah with five from... other people in it yeah, yeah. you want to try that yeah that's... no so they've had experts redo it there's multiple like you can look it up there's all these different people that have tr recreated the whole thing and, oh, and really? no one can do it it's like impossible he hit the target twice how about can we talk about the direction of these bullets yeah yeah so that's another weird thing the official so one, story so says, one of them went through the side of his head and the other one went through his neck right the, but they, yeah. but the official story is that they both kind of came from the back side of him right yeah but what the, but the, what the actual doctors that worked on him in the trauma room here actually have the, have this in here so they have so the doctors that worked in the trauma room on JFK had to be, you know file reports saying what happened what they observed in the emergency room and there's a ton of conflicting reports about this and confusion i mean it's it just is so suspicious mm -hmm. so one of the doctors said that there's a large hole on the right side of kennedy's head so large apparently that his cerebellum had protruded from the wound so his, his cerebellum brain, his yeah. brain was just oh my god falling out of his head oh that's yeah so, dude well you can tell from uh, the video it just looked horrible ugh. i mean yeah which i mean with that size of that bullet i mean you would expect that to but at the yeah. same time i'm like that bullet yeah, would have probably if that bullet had really hit him in the head it would have feel like it would have torn his whole head open like i guess it, it did, did but wow do you need to watch the footage again it definitely yeah. did um so one in the right area and then one small penetrating wound in the middle of the neck mm-hmm God, crazy. Yeah. The footage well, is so sad. And Jackie like crawling out of the, of the back of the car is so sad. Yeah. Oh, I can't even imagine what she went through Dude, during she that. must have been terrified. That must have been so traumatic. I just don't believe with that shitty of a gun you could hit a moving target with five other people in the car from a far distance and have the accuracy twice as a marksman. It just makes no sense. I think most people at least like whether or not you believe in the full-blown conspiracy thing like most people at least believe that there was more than one shooter I mean come on if you still want to deny that then dude Might be time to just like open your brain just even a little <laughs> Like it's ridiculous. Yeah, and some of these medical medical examiners believe that the second small bullet that went through his neck went through from the front Right, that's no way from the front it went from the back i know that's the but i know some, but some people believe that it went through the front uh, yeah i think that's what the official story is right no the official story is that it went through the back because if it if it's going to fit this like basically other other people that have looked at this have said that it looks it's possible that the bullet went through the front of the neck versus the back of the neck i've but, heard that people think that there was again, two different shooters one in back of him right. hit him from the back and, one and then the another front. shooter hit him from the front because right. the official story is if you watch this bullet if you watched him get shot he clearly was shot from the front like it's so so obvious not even a shadow of doubt in my mind that he was hit from he goes flying backwards like that is not i'm sorry that is not how inertia works <laughs> is that the right <laughs> term like that's not how it works
Yeah. If you were hit, you'd fall forward. Come on. Come on. This is basic physics. gravity, physics, whatever. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So obviously these shooters came from different places. Unless some people want to say if he was shot from the front. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. All I know is that from my personal opinion, hit, it looks you... like one was in the back, one was in the front. They definitely weren't from the same place. That's the one thing we can all agree on, whether you want to believe it's from the front, the back, whatever. They definitely weren't from the same place. One made him f go forward. The other one made him go back. And, hmm. I, and I don't think it could have even been from the same gun. No. Because if, no. That, if that rifle had hit him in the head ripped his skull open then why didn't his neck get completely blown up by well, i think they said they bullet. like it skimmed him no way. there's a hole through the middle of the neck yeah his neck should have been his fucking neck should have been yeah then. he should have been like yeah he should have been com a complete mess yeah what the hell oh and the fact God. that there's like one little hole in it like what and they actually pulled out tiny fra bullet fragments out of it and that's very small considering how big the bullets are yeah so, I mean, obviously the bullet could have went clean through, but... Yeah, and the, there's bullet fragments of the bullet that went through his head. But the bullet that went through his neck, this bullet went... Clean through. Into his neck, and then it went into Jack Connolly. There were seven different... Yeah, Jack Connolly was shot as right, well in yeah. his leg, I believe. Because, well, if you're shooting a bullet down into the car, it yeah. naturally would go through him, yeah. ricochet off the car, and right. hit everybody else that's in there. So I think this, this bullet went through two, two people... Seven entry points, I believe. Seven wounds. God. And, or, se I don't, seven holes? I don't know. Yeah. Crazy. Yes, that's actually, yeah, because it went through, yep. Because it went through someone's hand as well, I believe. Like, in through his hand, out, and then into the guy's leg. So, by, so this same day, by 6 p.m., they've already got him. Wait, wait, wait. I need to finish my thought on that. Okay. The bullet, though. Is it's actually probably the biggest piece of evidence in this whole case. It is the thing that people always go to with the JFK, the JFK theories, is that the bullet is referred to as a magic bullet because this bullet did not change shape. It is not dented. It is in perfect condition. But the one that went through his head, there's fragments of it and stuff. So, but this one that went through seven different points is completely untouched. That's like unheard of. That doesn't yeah, make any sense. Especially after that much contact with things, it should should break apart. Or at least, at least be dented. Yeah, at least show some signs. Yeah, it was, it was like in perfect clean. condition. It was like clean, pretty much. Like yeah, so that's like probably the biggest thing that people. So many weird things with that. Go to yeah. So many weird things. So <sighs> all right, you go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you're good. Um. So so by the time the evening rolls around, they've already got him on the Air Force One. They're already back at back in Maryland. Robert Kennedy meets Jackie, and Jackie starts recounting everything that happened to to robert and meanwhile lyndon johnson robert robert kennedy yeah you said what happened to robert oh i did yeah <laughs> what happened to john but uh lyndon johnson's making his first statement as president at this point in time but back in dallas oswald is still being interrogated at yeah 6 20 p.m well he and this is when he had his big sort um, of uh the only the only thing we media. have yeah, yeah this is really like thank god someone filmed this dude yeah where's where where's the interrogation tapes at there's not any they hid everything this wasn't treated like a normal investigation at all they, this is hush hush for sure yeah and like i mean the fact that we have this like tiny 45 second clip of him like screaming in the like trying to get some attention that oh my god i didn't even do this they're not letting me have a lawyer before they shove him back into a room again. All right, here it is, 45 seconds long. Just a second, I would say, please. I'd like some legal representation. These police officers have not allowed me to, to have any. Okay. I, uh, I don't know what this is all about. I'll get the black eye. No, sir, I didn't keep it back in the back. Sir? Did you shoot the president? I work in that building. Were you in the building at the time? Naturally, if I work in that building, yes, sir. Back up, man. No, they're taking me in because of the fact that I live in the Soviet Union. I'm just a patsy. I'm just a patsy. Then they shove him away. Wow, that looks like somebody. That that just does not look like somebody 
that just like murdered a police officer. No, he's like, I want to know what this is about. He looks confused as hell. He looks yeah. like he's like, what the hell's going he on? He just wants some legal representation. And you know what? James Earl Ray, the man who apparently shot JFK, I mean, sorry, MLK, <laughs> he was proven in a court of law in a civil trial, as most of my audience knows, innocent that he didn't shoot Martin Luther King. And he was never given any lawyers at first either. It took like a very long time. And the King family had to fight for him. The King family always believed in him and tried to clear his name until the day he died. God. I mean, people just don't realize this because you hear it in your textbook. James Earl Ray. Okay, yeah, he did it. That's, the, evil thing. Racist. That's the thing is they put it together. They make the narrative make sense. They, they're very smart about how they do yeah. it. And they devise the story that has all the components they need in order for it to make sense to everybody. So yeah. people will be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Moving on. But not our generation, dude. Our generation is is taking a second look. Our generation is really smart. Wants to know the truth, wants to dig a little deeper. And I think it's kind of an older generation thing to have this trust in the government, this trust that the version, like, they want what's best for us. They're so honest. And like, do you, you do realize we are pretty much enslaved by these people. They just, I feel like people have such, they're well, such an issue realizing that things aren't what they appear to be. Or like what they don't, they're being reported. They're so as. like grateful to their country or indebted to their country. They don't want to even like consider that there could be this like sketchiness going on. And, and, and there's so much proof of it. They just want to ignore it. And so most people won't question the official story. Right. I well, learned it in my textbook. So that's the truth. But how would you know any different if you didn't know about these conspiracy theories, you know, or if, you know, right. a lot I of people have. just think these conspiracy theories are bullshit and, yeah. and just, <laughs> just like literally laugh at them. Yeah. I have say, like ah, people in my life crazy. that think I'm insane. You're crazy. Cause you think. There's a conspiracy around the assassination of of one of our presidents. It's like, really? <laughs> like, am I really crazy? Because, like, with the MLK thing, someone I was just arguing with this uh, with someone about this. They're like, "What do you mean? Obviously, it was James Earl Ray." And then I told them there was a, there was a trial with a full jury where he was found not guilty. What do you think of that? And they don't they don't know. They like their jaws drop. So. Got to open your mind these days. And but, you know, it's not people's fault because it is like that. I didn't know for a long time. I just. No, it's not people's fault because it's not, re you know, the information isn't readily available. As you're seeing, like, even with us doing this podcast, is it's like, you got to really dig. Oh my God, guys. You got to dig deep it's to so find, hard. like, the truth. Like, that's the thing about it. Yes. Is the truth is not just, like, on the surface of, no. you know, of all of this no. information. It's buried deep within all these lies and inner intertangled and it's just a complete especially complex. with this conspiracy so theory i've just like just right now doing this podcast i'm realizing like what a clusterfuck this is like this is oh, just a such a fucking mess like i can't mm -hmm. even believe that more people don't realize how sketchy this was like well you can't even find the information to make the decision for yourself if you type in jfk conspiracies on google you're gonna get 10 pages straight of just why so many americans believe this conspiracy why do so many americans believe that jfk was still murdered even 50 years later like these are the articles that are available they for instantly us try to make you feel dumb for even yeah. questioning the official like, look at story. how many dumb americans believe this how about Look at how many damn Americans believe this, guys. Like, right? They're all just wrong. Well, I think it was a lot easier at this time in the 1960s. You don't have you don't have the internet. You have. Oh yeah. They have total control over the yes. over what's the media shows, yeah. what the media reports. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it's was way now. more controlled back then. But now, through you know WikiLeaks and all these different yeah. ways of getting you know once classified information. And we're starting to see these official government docs roll out yeah. where it's literally spelling out in in plain text yeah. that they're fucking doing sketchy shit. Yeah. They're the CIA is conducting assassination attempts on other people around and the collaborating world. with the mafia. There's proof of that in the JFK files. If you actually would like to educate yourself on it. Um, I mean, these files, too, were 
I think it was in the 90s, I want to say, that they were, they uh, yeah, because it was like in 25 years from now, we're finally going to release the all of the JFK documents. It's like, why do we need to wait 25 years to get the truth? And there's still a bunch of pages omitted. And like, you know, that's just the version that, that's just like how much there, there's definitely documents that aren't even like, not just undisclosed, but just like not even mentioned, period. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's just... Fuck me up, man. <laughs> Fuck okay. me up. All right, moving on. But uh, so JFK is taken back to Maryland where the government does their official autopsy on him and the autopsy results. So th again, there's all this controversy with the autopsy with why wasn't the autopsy done by, you know, more independent medical examiners in Dallas and why did they hurry him to, you know, the Air Force Base where they could have, you know, these military doctors do this autopsy and and they were the ones that released the official report, of course, saying that JFK was killed by two shots from the rear. And there's actually a picture of the autopsy report of the sketch that um, Commander J.J. Humes made. And it's pretty sloppy. And the doctor who actually made the sketch later admitted he had made a mistake causing people to think that there may have been a second assassin. So he made it even made a mistake. So it's just a complete mess. They didn't record anything correct. It seems like there are people dropping the ball left and right. Yeah. Nothing was followed to protocol rules being broken everywhere. Yeah. And the fact that Parkland Memorial Hospital had a different uh, had a completely different assessment of his body is crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's it's bizarre and this whole time Oswald's like it wasn't me. I didn't shoot anybody I don't yeah. know what the hell's going on mm -hmm. and the police are trying to figure out how to how to Connect Oswald to the rifle. Yeah, how and, did they connect him to that? Well, they ended up connecting him after he fucking died <laughs> Then all of a sudden they of had course. his fingerprints on a gun after he was dead Well, of course you can put a dead by dead body or Easily. a dead guy. That's fingers. the thing. Yeah, they just wanted to, oh to close this case up and call it solved and move he, on. And where the hell was he where someone was able to kill him? Right. Because literally the next day, the next November day. 24th, Oswald was brought to the basement of the Dallas police headquarters on his way to a more secure county jail in a crowd. That was, of, yeah, this was two days later, actually. But yeah, sorry. I just wanted to clarify because it was the 22nd that he was shot. No, you shot on the 23rd, dude. This right here says 23rd. shot Kennedy on the 22nd. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. So the 24th. 24th. So two days later. Yeah. Two days later, he is brought into the basement and there's all these police impressed with live television cameras rolling. Yeah. Gathered to witness him leaving this jail. Mm -hmm. And as Oswald came into the room. Jack Ruby emerged from the crowd. I'm pretty sure he was just like a bar owner. He was just like some dude. Yeah, he was a nightclub owner in yeah. Dallas. Yeah. Just right. emerged from this crowd and shot him. Shot him with a single shot with a 38 <laughs> revolver and shot him at 12:20 p.m. Yeah, let's listen let's listen to the audio of that. And Ruby was obviously immediately arrested and claimed that the reason he did it was because he was pissed about Kennedy's murder, which was the motive for his action. Well, most conspiracy theorists believe, on the other hand, that they started realizing how uncooperative, right? You know, he's Oswald is being, Oswald's being and a pain him in the ass. He's yeah. going to talk. He's going to spill the beans. On yeah, what's going on? Because it's possible they he was in on the plan, but mm -hmm. he didn't know the extent of it. He didn't know he'd go down for it, so he was going to like you know. Um. Okay, so let's listen to this real fast. Here it comes. Now the prisoner uh, wearing a white spider is changed from his t-shirt. Let me have it. I want it. Being let out by uh, Captain Fritz. There is a prisoner. There is a prisoner. He's been shot. He's been shot. Oh my god. This looks so so fake. It looks so like set up. Absolute panic here in the basement of Oh shit. He's just been shot. Oh my god. Oswald has been shot at point blank range. 
What the hell? Oh my god, this seems so set up. What you the gotta, hell? You gotta see the video for yourself, friends. Well, We're gonna link a, some good videos in the description but if, of all this if stuff. you're listening, just when you get a chance, Google Lee Harvey Oswald shot by Jack Ruby and you can watch the video. Yeah. It looks so fake. Because literally, <laughs> they're just so like fake. casually walking in, walking through the police station and what the hell? This police station doesn't like check people for weapons? Like, what the hell? This guy just like pulls out a gun and shoots him. Yeah. And it's just, it, it looks ridiculous. But yeah, Jack Ruby got charged yeah. with first degree murder. And he died. He died of, died the of second cancer trial. before the second trial. So wonder if this was all planned. I wonder if they planned or, you know, if Jack, if they were like, hey, Ruby, go kill this guy. Yeah, we need you to kill this guy. Uh, God, what the hell? It's, it's always suspicious when, you know, people involved with the crime, especially like a homicide, just like all of a sudden end up dead, you know? Yeah. Like when that happens today, you're like, what the hell? Clearly there's something behind the scenes going on. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it could have just been this random dude that was pissed off about. But why would some random dude like try to do it inside of a police station? Like, I don't know. It just seems like so ridiculous that it's almost un unbelievable. Why? How could you get the? Why were they not checking people for guns yeah, at the police what the station? Hell? I swear, like sometimes it was just like open, like free, free for all, dude. Oh my god, that would never happen today. So stupid. The Even Casey Anthony, they like bust her out on a secret thing. She, no one saw her. Bulletproof like, vest on. Yeah, but Jack like, Ruby, they just leave. Like it's a free. <laughs> you can just watch it. You can just walk right up to. I them. mean, not Jack Ruby Oswald. Sorry, but what the fuck? It makes no sense. I don't know. Just everything about this was so weird, and I feel like everything was so different back then. Like. Things were so much more sloppy because you could hide things from people so much easier. But now we're like holding everyone's feet to the fire because we, we have like proof. We have we can communicate. We can organize and talk about it. Yeah. Oh, and like point out the these these issues in this. This is very problematic. All of these things. And what, and what we know now is that the FBI and the CIA were both monitoring Oswald. Yes. So th that this is what's so interesting is that. We're now finding out there's so many connections and we know for a fact that the FBI and CIA knew about what Oswald was up to. They knew he took a trip to Mexico. Yeah. They knew he traveled to the Soviet Union. In yeah. They were watching. Nine. Mm -hmm. He uh, he was uh, kind of like their dude. He would he went to the Soviet Union probably to do. I mean, who knows what? But I think he was like working with them in some way. He was trying to be a Soviet citizen. He, he was trying to go there and like live in the Soviet Union. So there's a lot. There's some people that think maybe he was like, and that's actually one of the theories is that he was working for the KGB. He was like some sort of like Russian Soviet spy, ah, mm -hmm. possibly because it is a little odd, like especially at that time in history to just be yeah. like, I'm going to the Soviet Union. Like, yeah, they were kind of an enemy oh, of yeah. ours at the time. Oh, yeah, so. big time, dude. And oh, that's weird. Yeah. No, it's very weird. Hmm. And some, and when talking about this KGB theories, there's some people that believe that a band of Soviet officers carried out Kennedy's assassination. Huh. Hmm. I don't know. Directed by uh, Nikita Khrushchev. Honestly, I feel like they would have liked that Kennedy was like trying to like stop a lot of the bullshit that America was doing, you know, like trying to shut down. I don't feel like why would they want to kill him? Well, because because this was at the end of uh, towards the end of 1962 was the Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah. And uh, this this uh, Soviet Khrushchev uh, was trying to put intercontinental ballistic missiles uh, in Cuba. But because of the U.S.'s. Uh, our, our threats against the Soviet Union were like, hey, don't do that. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. They think that maybe that might have been a motive for killing Kennedy. So if, well, okay. Because so they even if he was just that. like doing stuff with the Soviet Union and the government was aware of it, the CIA was watching him, is it possible that they found out where he worked, planned to have JFK go right past that building, knew that he would be there, so that it's kind of killing two birds with one stone. Like, it's kind of like, if you're going to blame something, blame an enemy. Blame someone else you right. want to take out. Right. So that which, makes a lot of sense. Which, I feel like if that were the case, 
I feel like the official story probably would have been spinned in that direction, you know, like, cause that would be a fairly believable story that like the Russians, you know, like, think about it. They blaming our enemy for our president. being Oh, assassinated. the KBG theory. Yeah. 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 Oh, you've already, Oh, you sorry. Talking about a different one. No, I was just talking about if, if Oswald was like, trying you know if he was on our watch list for stuff with the soviet union it doesn't necessarily mean he actually did right. it. like oh, two separate things yeah yeah yeah. i got you okay. just that he if he was involved that they might have wanted to get rid of him maybe he's a spy maybe he knew something i mean that's what i was saying but i don't i don't believe the uh why was that why can't i i'm so dyslexic kbg kgb 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 right? yep okay let's talk about the mafia okay uh connection here. but i don't think it was the kgb yeah Personally. No, I don't. I don't necessarily think. I think because I I do agree with you. It would have been easy to spin it in that that way. Like that's a why good wouldn't cover. they do why that? They or like that? be like, this is why we need war with Russia or something. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that it's the official account doesn't seem to really point in the direction of the Soviet Union and KGB. I don't know. So I don't really when think. we're talking about the CIA and you know all these different organizations, and when we say like, you know, as a basic conspiracy theorist, you say like the government did it. But like who did who exactly the government the government a lot is of fucking huge there's a lot of the government as a whole is functions how it's supposed to but there's all these different like sources and influences that are part of it so cia is completely is like its own thing you it's know? like its own government yeah yeah exactly it's completely it's so so different there's it's way higher clearance in the CIA than the president has. There's yeah. what are there 15 levels of clearance above 35. the president? 35. There, the le, yeah, the <laughs> levels of secrecy go up. So there you go, high. friends. 35 levels above there is. Yeah. The, the president's not even that powerful. So the CIA is the C- really where the the the, crazy the secretive shit, is. shit. Yeah, the CIA is probably probably the most secretive agency, government agency there is because as far as we know, they're sort of like that's where our spies are and they're doing reconnaissance and all this surveillance yeah. and whatever else. Them and the NSA are, are the most secretive with the highest clearances besides the military. What but, if they just like busted in this room right now? And they're like, hands up! You're talking about us. Oh my god. Somebody like <laughs> just like myself. breaks our window down here and <laughs> <laughs> it's like please we're we're not we're just conspiracizing. We're not we don't have any plans. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I really have no proof to prove that yeah. any of this is true. So we have some proof. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, if yeah. I were to be, we like, ain't trying to expose anything. We're just, we're just talking about it. So okay. the CIA, <laughs> thanks. Like we mentioned earlier, <laughs> has been proven to have worked with the mob, the mafia. Yeah. Well, in the JFK files, that's what we found out. Is there was more proof of that? There is straight up. If you look at that document, yeah. that says top secret. We have proof that they were working with people in the mafia for some assassinations in Cuba as well as other places. Right. Yep. So we know that the, the CIA does have a relationship with the mafia. Facts. F-A-C-T-T. What? What did I just say? F-A-C-T-T. <laughs> <laughs> I said this last time. F-A-C-T-S. Facts. That is a fact. So, I mean, doesn't that make you a little curious? Like, but, yeah. come on. No, I know. And at this time in history, the... Both the CIA and the mafia had a shared interest in overthrowing Castro in Cuba. Yeah. As the since the mafia actually had a number of investments in Cuban m- casinos that were at risk of being shut down. Yeah. And like, yes. And like you just said, the JFK files show the CIA, CIA did work with the mafia to take down Castro. Right. So it's possible that they worked together with in order to assassinate Kennedy. Which is not totally out of the question and could totally be because I mean if if you know anything about the mafia or you know mob groups they're they're very organized they're very good at what they do and the fact that they know how to get away with shit like this I mean look at Al Capone and all these famous gangsters and stuff like they got Mm -hmm. away with so much shit before they finally got caught and you know in yeah. prison and stuff like i don't think our generation quite understands no we it don't because well. we don't have we really don't have something well i mean we do this was mass organized crime that was just as big as a government agency you know it right. was just as powerful and like just as hard just and that i mean to go with that theory robert kennedy was very very against the mafia was really actively pushing to shut them down 
So it's possible that they would have had their own reasons that they kind of collabed on it. The CIA is like, yo, he's talking about secret right. societies. You, help, he's trying to, you scratch our back, we'll scratch yep, your back. Yep, exactly. And it's very possible that that could happen. That's the theory, I believe, that they, they collaborated on it because taking out uh, John fucked up Robert. Like, he was, like, fucked up. And then yeah. he got assassinated a few years later, so... Which, the, I mean, this theory plays into the multiple gunmen theory. Oh, my God. Is our lava lamp working it's now? working. Whoa. Yeah, finally. guys, we think we have a defective lava lamp. <laughs> yeah, that, why does it look like... <laughs> looks is, like poop. I was just about to like say Like green that. poop. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. But the, the mafia theory plays well with the multiple gunmen theory, which I think at the end of the day, no matter who did it, I think there was most definitely probably multiple at least multiple gunmen involved like it just seems like there would have had to have been unless there yeah. was like one dude yes. that's like some crazy sniper dude but <laughs> still it, i don't believe there was one because because the direction of the bullets you can just see it if you have eyes you can google this on your youtubes <laughs> i sounded so old yeah. just now it, it looks like there's bullets coming from different directions. Yes. They clearly come from different directions, dude. I mean, he literally hit down, hit from the Boom. front yeah. backwards. Like, <laughs> come on. Yeah. So he definitely, I think there's definitely two shooters. Like that theory, I'm pretty sure at this point, people are just like, yeah, whether you believe there's a conspiracy or not, whatever, but there's definitely two shooters. Like some people believe that path that, uh, you know, Oswald had like another shooter working with him, but that guy got away and Oswald never ditched on him and then he died. So the guy just got away. Yeah. So some people like when they refuse to look at like the government possibly being the, the right. answer to this. Maybe they come Oswald up with, just yeah. had like a counterpart that escaped. Yeah. So even people that don't believe in the conspiracies still believe that there were two sh two shooters from two different places. God. Or maybe it was the Umbrella Man. Yeah. Well, this is interesting. I th I actually before, wait really fast. Sorry, just before I forget this, I don't want to leave this out. This looks horrible. This lava lamp. Yeah, it's still heat. <laughs> it, it looks like it. We'll see if it heats up all the way. But <laughs> crazy. But um, no. What I was gonna say is there were there's multiple acoustical science scientists who have set up this whole situation and have determined that from the noise because what was it? There was a recording. Let me find this in our notes. We have like thirty pages of notes. Oh, um, that that the actual yes. Yeah, so they heard. a microphone on a police motorcycle traveling in the presidential motorcade um, had been stuck on the on position, and the sounds had been recorded on a dicta belt machine at Dallas Police Headquarters. So they have recording of the bullet sounds. They have recording of the whole thing happening. Sound. So the acoustical sciences scientists re reset it up and they determined that these bullets came from two separate directions that was their findings there's multiple scientists that came out with that interesting that finding yeah wow yeah god there's uh, something going on here there's been tons of things set up like that like some tons of experiments where the, it never makes sense it never works out no one can ever explain how yeah how this happened the way that they said it did right god but this is one of my favorite theories the most famous <laughs> this is just because i think it's really interesting to think about yeah but one of the most popular theories is that maybe one of these multiple gunmen was this umbrella man which was a figure seen mysteriously holding a black umbrella literally on elm street right as like on the street right as the motorcade was passing him when JFK got shot and this dude is just holding an umbrella on a 68 degree sunny day in Dallas open I mean it, it, it could just be like you the logical answer to this is that he just was had it open for shade that's what I th I mean that's one one thought he could have just been like getting some shade yeah as but it people is, do it is weird though and but I don't know if it was as weird back then. Like, I think it was kind of a, a fashion thing. Right. Just kind of like to carry your umbrella around yeah. everywhere. Well, like, not everywhere, but like even on a sunny day. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> the, 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 <coughs> I mean, for here. all we know, like skin cancer runs in the dude's family. Yeah. 
I don't know. There's a lot of reasons someone could have an umbrella out, even if it's not raining, because I think back then it was just like a shade thing. And like even before that, there was a time where it was it was completely normal to have a umbrella out on a sunny day. Like women had like. Yeah, you know, yeah. Pair, what are I don't even remember what they're called fashion but. umbrellas. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a big black umbrella that kind of matched. Maybe they just wanted to as they were waiting and watching standing yeah. in the sun. They they may have been waiting a long time. JFK was taking a long time because yeah, the, he was saying hi to people. Right. So maybe he just didn't want to like he's maybe he's bald for all we know. Didn't right. want his bald head to burn. Well, the reason that there's this theory exists is because it's possible and we know that the CIA has this technology. Like obviously the CIA being spies They've got some James Bond shit. They've got some like secretive weapons, like guns built into like everyday normal stuff like flashlights, umbrellas probably. So the theory goes that this mysterious person with this black umbrella had this special umbrella that could shoot one of these darts um, and that possibly this person shot a dart that went through JFK's neck possibly, which kind of hard to believe because I feel like a dart would probably not cl go clean through and they would have found a dart but it's possible that this person shot a poison dart into kennedy's neck which could have helped immobilize him in order to allow for whoever you know whoever else was out there to deliver the kill shot to jfk so well that makes sense it's possible and the secret service knows that these weapons exist so it's in their protocol to not allow people to have it just yeah. seems like this was that like so relaxed that yeah because well the first one the first bullet i could believe was from a flechette it kind of did maybe it was a combination of that umbrella and a gun if it really was the cia and they had some type of umbrella shooting technology you know what i mean yeah because like I, I don't think it could shoot a bullet I mean, maybe that first that explains why his neck wasn't like completely destroyed. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's what people that's what people think. Right. Is that this umbrella dude it had this like dart gun yeah. <laughs> built into his umbrella. Yeah. Huh. It's poss I mean, it's possible. We don't know. Well, you know what's interesting? I'm gonna play this. Bill O'Reilly. We never see him these days since he, oh, yeah, he sexually really... assaulted a bunch of girls. Fuck Bill O'Reilly. But um, Bill O'Reilly did a report on this as a young chap. Um, <laughs> I just think it's so funny. It must have been what this. It looked like the eighties that he did the seventies. Yeah, it must have been. It's God. a real. It's nineteen seventy nine. This report. Okay, so this is Bill O'Reilly's voice. Bill O'Reilly investigates. Dallas, Texas, sixteen years ago, the last moments of President John F. Kennedy's life. Here is the first sign of trouble. Kennedy reacting with his hands to something, his wife Jacqueline looking at him, and a man with a raised umbrella standing only yards away. Moments later, two bullets slammed into the president from behind. Why is there an open umbrella near the president when this is against Secret Service rules and the temperature in Dallas on November 22, 1963 was 68, skies sunny? And who is holding this umbrella? These questions have been the subject of research and debate for 16 years. Now this man, Robert Cutler, is charging that the man holding the umbrella was part of a conspiracy to kill JFK. Cutler, a Massachusetts architect and Harvard graduate, has been researching the JFK assassination for 13 years and is convinced his theory is correct. Basically, this is Cutler's theory. On a warm, sunny November day, just like this one in Dealey Plaza, a man held up an umbrella just as President Kennedy approached in his car. The man shot a dart into Kennedy's throat the umbrella being the firing mechanism. Now, all this sounds a little far-fetched, but some researchers believe it, and they point to some hard evidence. First of all, the dart or flechette. This dart was found in a Hartford gun show in 1977, and Cutler believes it is similar to the one allegedly fired at Kennedy. It is a matter of record that the CIA developed such a dart and a firing system for it. This man, Richard Bissell, an ex-CIA agent who lives in Farmington, confirms the weapon's existence.
This is Bissell's home in Farmington. He refuses to talk to us on camera, saying he's too busy. But over the phone, he did tell me that the CIA did indeed have a dart or flechette weapon well before JFK was assassinated. So, in 1963, the umbrella firing dart did exist, and Cutler has made extensive drawings detailing how the dart could have been fired. But although the Umbrella Man was just 26 yards away from JFK, the question of firing a dart with accuracy must be raised. Hartford assassination researcher George Michael Evica believes Cutler may be onto something and has investigated the Umbrella weapon. Wouldn't it be hard to shoot a dart at a moving target from an Umbrella? No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. Tell me why. Um, well, Charles Sensony, the man who developed it, who uh, gave testimony in 1975, to the Church Intelligence Committee said that it was both op operational, he is the one who invented it, and that it was accurate up to 100 meters. When the limousine came around the corner like this, the difference between here and where he actually fired is... All right, that's not... Interesting, though. So, it, it, I mean, it could be... It's possible, I guess. That, yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's really possible. It's possible. I mean, at this point... As you probably have realized, it, anything is possible with this <laughs> Nothing is as assassination. I mean, the big, the biggest red flag for me is like, what the hell, Secret Service? You suck. Yeah. Because like when Reagan got shot, they they hopped all over his ass, and you know kept him from being killed. But when JFK gets shot, they they reacted so slow. Yeah. So slow. Yep. It just it's something was up. Something was definitely up. Because mm -hmm. what the hell? God damn. I know. I know. It's this so this crazy. conspiracy just... Uh, I know. Awful. All right. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, there's so many details of this, and like we could sit here for like three hours yeah. to go through every detail. I mean, I, I don't even think it's needed, though, because I think just hearing the story of what happened to him mm -hmm. leaves a question mark in everybody's head yeah i mean i don't know i mean i would like to talk to somebody who's like nope this is the official rec record of his assassination there's absolutely nothing questionable about it like i know you'd have to you seriously have to be so close-minded to think like that because there's so many inconsistencies i just don't the get the whole trust. thing between the autopsy, yeah. some of the uh, actual records were destroyed. The way they moved him so fast. I mean, just it was so weird. Just everything about it is just mind-boggling. I mean, yeah. I just don't even understand how this happened. You don't and understand yet, how it I mean, happened. how this happened and like people at that time didn't like rage and like because, I mean, people did dude, rage, but like people were upset that he at the time, you're angry at, at Oswald, the gunman that just killed JFK. We love JFK. Yeah. And of course, we want to believe. I mean, they're all sad, too. The media is sad. Everyone's sad. Like, you're going to want to believe. That. Naturally, we look to them for answers. When anything happens, the Las Vegas shooting, you look to the media for answers. And sometimes that's not the best place to look is what we're finding out. Because when you start to do your own independent research and open your brain and think outside of the box... You you find a whole different story. Yeah, I mean a completely different story with so many loose ends and just so many different mm -hmm. different unexplored angles. I mean, I just think at the end of the day, there's so much. Not only is there so much evidence that this happened and that he was murdered in some type of conspiracy, but there's also a lot of evidence of why. I mean, that speech was so obviously not what they want him to say he was speaking out against all these things and all these agencies are alive and well and functioning today you know it completely like it would have derailed a lot of things if jfk was still alive things would be very different today and i truly believe that because he would have fought right, and he would have spoken been... out dude imagine if he was like this during his presidency imagine what he would have be like post-presidency the amount of things he would have said there's probably so much he learned when he was in there. Like, he was like, holy shit, this is so corrupt. Yeah. So, I just think it's very obvious that JFK was the man ahead of his time. He was trying to. Yeah, he was about free. 50 years early. Yeah. Seems like. And he really cared about the people. And people like that get taken out. I mean, well, there's, especially there's, then, because, like, yeah. 
I think what you have to remember is like at this point, I actually did like a whole in school. I did a whole like report on Jay, Jay Edgar, Jay Edgar Hoover. Yeah. He's the a FBI director and he dude. did all kinds of sketch. like these, these law enforcement agencies, especially the FBI and the CIA were definitely up to some sketchy stuff because they weren't, there was no oversight into these agencies. So they were pretty much like left to do whatever they wanted to do. Like the FBI oh, yeah. was doing sketchy shit, wiretapping, yeah. all this oh, yeah. all this illegal shit that, you know, they technically weren't allowed to do. The CIA was doing, you know, know. probably assassinations. I know. And it's like, oh my God. Even a few years ago when someone would say that, yeah, the NSA spies on you, they listen to your phone calls, they <laughs> they listen to We're your like, oh, shit. No, no one believed it back then. Yeah. The people were like, oh, whatever, dramatic dude now it's like everyone believes that everyone knows that because it's been confirmed by the news yeah well that, wikileaks yeah the uh, fbi Edward spies Snowden. on us the, S- the cia spies on us you know i'm sure they're listening to us what up guys uh, <laughs> come and get us i mean at the end of the day i'm not worried about it because i'm not like a whistleblower i'm not trying to expose anything or do anything but i mean it is crazy but i think it's important that people talk about it because yeah we can't just they ignore. work for us. We dude. can't ignore the government this. works for us. Right. People forget that. And they always want to defend it. They want to defend politicians. They want to defend the government. They want to defend the CIA. Just remember that they work for you. I mean, still, though, we still have no idea what the CIA is up to. They're like, yeah, we're fighting crime. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> what What are you doing then? Like, why isn't there? There's just no, there's just like too much secrecy. There really is. Well, there's just guess who talked about? out against secrecy yep jfk and look what happened to him yep so anyway crazy i think that's about it we've been going for an hour and 40 minutes so (laughs) want to go for a few more hours (laughs) i have a headache i get so overwhelmed talking about this stuff i get really frustrated and annoyed this was a hard one to talk about yeah it's upsetting because i really love jfk like i love the kennedy family i think they were really good people and it's, it's a shame. Just a shame. It's an absolute shame that this is that that he was assassinated. Yeah, I mean, and that more people don't know about it because he was trying to stick up for all of us. He was trying to change things for everyone. He was really trying to make the government a, a more fair and transparent. A, we want. He wanted a freer country. Right. It. It. And that's the thing is that it's so blatantly obvious that our government needs an overhaul we need to overhaul the shit we should have way more transparency yeah the people should have more of a say in it i don't know we should know what's going on but i, I guess mean, i'm not trying to have an overhaul i mean i like my life i know but i think for the greater good of humanity i think we need an overhaul. but can we do anything i don't know i think these these organizations are really powerful and look what like if jfk i just i don't know it makes you feel a little hopeless, I have to say, personally. It makes me feel like a little overwhelmed. Sad. Hashtag sad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's that's, that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a wrap. <laughs> we want to know what you guys think, so share your if you're watching, you know, share in a comment. Comment. If you think we're full of shit, share in a comment. If you love it, share in a comment. Yeah, and let us know. We have a if different theory. There's other the conspiracy theories that yeah would be interesting to talk about. This yeah, one's there's just a hard lot because I I just the timeline's just so wonky. There's so many like confusion and there's so many conflicting stories. It, it was it was hard to even like come up with like a solid timeline that makes sense because like yeah. there's just so many conflicting things. So it's not very straightforward. Yeah, well that's how conspiracies are. You have to it's you have to piece it together yourself. Um. But I've, I was thinking for the next one, we could talk about the Titanic, if anyone is interested in that. I've just been really interested in that lately. The Titanic's fascinating. The I would love to talk about the it. Titanic. Yeah. I've okay. always been fascinated by well, that. Well, thumbs up if you guys want a Titanic conspiracy video. I mean, a podcast coming up soon. But that's it. That's a wrap. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Yes. For episode six. Be sure to Mile Higher Podcast. subscribe. You can listen to where can you listen to us, Josh? You can listen to us wherever you want. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> iTunes, Spotify, milehigherpodcast.com, SoundCloud, wherever you can listen to a podcast, you should be able to find us. So be sure to subscribe 
and we will be back next week with another episode for you. Yes. Thank you for your support. Stay woke, and we will see you later. See you next time, guys. Yeah.